look, what player, any player that stops in any sport and tries to restart at a certain age, it's not going to be the same. Think about it. LeBron's never stopped. No. Michael right. stopped. He did. If Michael kept running all the way through and never took that time <laughs> off, we don't know what we would see. Magic Johnson stopped. Okay, then he tried to come back and play. It wasn't the same. Okay. I mean, that's just, you got to right. keep doing it okay. and doing it and doing it and yeah. doing it. How do you explain? Like and subscribe, people. Let's get on. Let's get on to this. Uh, so, yeah, I wanted to do this video because uh, this segment comes from, uh, I think they were discussing when LeBron got to his 39,000 points. Uh Keyshawn Johnson, uh, Richard, uh, can't remember his last name at the moment, and Skip Bayless. They were discussing this, and, you know, it went talking about how amazing it was. And, you know, uh, ironically, Keyshawn Johnson didn't think it was the most amazing thing about uh, LeBron, which is uh, interesting considering that Keyshawn Johnson is just like everybody else on these sport networks. Networks <laughs> uh, love to uh, praise LeBron at ev any turn and corner that they can, but he didn't think it was the most impressive thing. He's like, "Hey, it's a longevity thing. Is that's gonna happen?" And he is correct. But so anyway, they keep talking, and Skip Bayless brings up Michael Jordan and his years with the Wizards, and then it kind of got into the clip that I played for you. And I played this uh, mostly for the LeBron James fanboys because one thing that they love to bring up over and over again is how Jordan's retirements, his retirements after the first three-peat, his retirement uh, after 98 was some sort of rest that allowed him to uh, still play at a high level. And... Uh, as you heard Keyshawn Johnson say, who is a professional football player, says it is much harder to stop playing and try to come back than it is to keep playing. So, fanboys, when you guys like to say, oh, Jordan got to rest after the first three-peat, uh, again, first of all, he was playing another sport, but second of all, he was training his body for a completely different sport. It is harder to come back uh, when you stop something. It is not some kind of break where you can retire for a year and a half and come back rejuvenated. Another thing Keyshawn Johnson said uh, that was, hey, if Jordan didn't take a break from 98 to when he came back to the Wizards, who knows what would have happened. And, uh, cause yeah, Skip Bayless said something to the effect that, uh, you know, he likes to say that, you know, Jordan's Wizards years was a disappointment. And absolutely, you know, it is not what, uh, people who grew up watching Jordan, people who saw Jordan during his Chicago days, it is not what we were used to. However, uh, I feel like Skip Bayless never brings out certain key points. He never talks about the fact that, Michael Jordan got injured during that first year with the Wizards. He never talks about that how very likely the Wizards were would have made the playoffs had Michael Jordan not got injured. He never brings up the Meta World Peace thing about Michael Jordan getting his ribs broken right before that season. So again, as much as Skip Bayless says, uh, you know, says Jordan is the GOAT and whatnot, he still does a lot of capping for LeBron James. And which goes back to this thing about LeBron's longevity. Again, you know, Jordan wasn't chasing anybody. Jordan wasn't necessarily chasing Magic and Bird. Jordan wanted to be respected by Magic and Bird, and he felt he had to when in order for that to happen. But Jordan wasn't chasing anybody. Jordan was simply uh, obsessed with being the best player he could be and dominating people. And again, th this is a difference. For, 
for you fanboys who love to praise LeBron for his longevity, a well, part of that is Le- LeBron is still chasing Michael Jordan. You know, they brought up the fact that he wants to play with Bronny in the NBA, and, and that's great. I'm sure if that happens, people will be saying, oh, well, he's definitely the go now. He got to play with his own son. <laughs> Uh, boy, I tell you what. Well, you 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 fanboys, y'all y'all incredible. You you guys are truly special. Y'all y'all a special group. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So you know, be- because LeBron James is still chasing Michael Jordan. You know, LeBron has the benefit of being born after Michael Jordan, so he knows what benchmark he's trying to hit. You know, he has this benchmark he's trying to hit. uh, But, again, he doesn't realize that it is his character that has kept him from hitting that benchmark. You know, it is his character in not developing as a basketball player. Hey, I'm going to tell you this. this. Some of you fanboys, y'all are completely delusional. Because I've heard too many many of y'all try to act as if LeBron has gotten better and better throughout his career. LeBron James has only gotten better in the sense that anything that you do over and over again, you're going to get somewhat better at it. But he has not gotten better in the sense of actually fixing his weaknesses. But, uh, yeah, like I said, Michael Jordan wasn't chasing anybody. Like, Michael Jordan wanted to be respected by his peers, and he knew what he had to do to do that. But he wasn't chasing this dream of trying to be the GOAT. Like, he was simply trying to dominate on a night-to-night basis. And again, that's why I say mentality makes all the difference. LeBron James not having a killer mentality, like I discussed in the other video, is his biggest problem. Because that killer mentality is what will fuel you to do a lot of that stuff. You know, that killer mentality will fuel you to actually work on your game. Because again, you have the need to dominate. But anyway, this is a quick video. Like I said, I just felt the need to, you know, I heard Keyshawn Johnson say that, and I was like, there you go. For for all you fanboys who love to say uh, MJ got this rest after the first three-peat, that, that is not rest. It is much harder to quit and come back, which is what makes that second three-peat all the more impressive, is he did quit for a year and a half. And he came back. And yes, fanboys, they did lose to the Orlando Magic. And they came back and swept them the next season with uh, the greatest season in the history of the NBA at the time, except they actually won the championship, unlike the Golden State Warriors. And again, to me, if you don't win a championship at the end of the season like that, it, it might as well you might as well not have done it. I mean, if, if you feel good about setting the record for season wins without the championship, like if, that, if you actually feel good about that, to me, there is something wrong with you. Like you are very much a second place trophy type of mentality. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think that Michael Jordan retirement <laughs> helped him rest so that he could be better when he came back or do you believe Keyshawn Johnson that the harder thing to do is to take a break and then try to get back to it let me know what you guys think in the comments you all have a truly fantastic day and I will see you next time alright